Okay, I thought I'd do a short little video on this computer that I've been working on over the last mm, probably two months. Now, this is a Z80 based computer, which is this chip right here. And it's actually pretty simplistic. It's designed as kind of a um, CPU trainer. Now, it's comprised of primarily three different sectors of the uh, board at this moment. First off would be the power supply board, which is this up here. Now this one uses a, uh, I believe it's a, uh, oh, I can't remember, LM323K uh, or 232K. Uh, so it's, it, anyhow, it's a 12 volt to 5 volt uh, linear voltage regulator. And of course it has some uh, capacitors up here for basically helping it out. Um, it does have a heat seek and a 12 volt fan, which is located right here. If I turn it on, you can hear it spin up. Now, aside from that, it's got what I refer to as a CPU core, which is right here in this area here. You have the Z80 processor, a 32K um, ROM, and a 32K SRAM, along with the memory decoding and the clock. Um, up here you have the power and the reset switch, and uh, you see another reset switch here. I'll get to that here in just a bit. Uh, the rest of the board, though, is this entire area here. As you can see, this entire area, about like that, is its I.O. Now, I'll get into this here in a few minutes, but this is completely uh, software driven. There's nothing on this that is actually, um, you know, taking over control of the address and data buses, uh, as you can see, uh, 16 switches right here and uh, eight switches right here. Um, the monitor for this actually runs to where it does um, calls to various different ports and finds out what the data is or writes data to the ports. Now you will see two um, sockets here that are unpopulated. I'll get to those here in a few minutes as well, but uh, generally speaking, those are going to be for the um, uh, output port here. Uh, what this is, is it's actually going to be um, buffered address data and control lines that can go to a secondary board that will either sit up underneath or, you know, to just be a standalone board that you can plug into for prototyping, whatever the situation may be. Now, a little bit about the organization of the computer. Um, it does have a uh, I.O. decoding chip right here, it, both the uh, address decoding and the I.O. decoding. Uh, they're uh, generic array logic chips, uh, GAL uh, by Latisse. Um, they're written in a language called WinCUPL, and um, they're pretty easy to uh, come up with decoding schemes with. I, I, I tend to prefer them over using discrete logic just because of the simplicity of being able to have one chip that can do just about everything. Now on the IO decoding it takes in addresses A0 through A7. Um, it takes in the IO request line and it takes in the read and write. Now it decodes these internally to a total of seven different chip select signals that are accessed by these chips here. Uh, there's going to be a, another signal that's actually going to run uh, this buffer chip here, which uh, it's going to be a 74LS245, or 74HCT245 rather, which will actually decode um, between when you're trying to access offboard I.O. versus onboard I.O. Um, basically it's going to control the chip select signal and then the um, directional gating is going to be handled by the uh, read line. Now these six chips here are the uh, registers for the I.O. onboard. The first three are exactly that, just registers. They're the 74, 374 8-bit uh, register chips. And they drive, each one of them drives two of these. Now these are generic array logic chips as well. Um, this particular uh, ones here are the 16V8s. This here is a 22V10. And this here is a, another 16V8. Now 
these I've written some code for. They are essentially uh, hexadecimal uh, display drivers. Uh, they take a four bit port, whether it be the um, upper four bits or the lower four uh, bits, uh, nibbles rather, of the information that's displayed on this particular register and it will send or one of these will send the data to one seven segment the other one will send it to another so that takes care of these three chips these three are 74 HCT 245s and what they do is they actually read data in from the input keys now these here are latching and um, basically they're used for the upper and lower address bits as well as the green here is also used as the data bits. The third one actually controls what I'm referring to as the uh, control keys or command keys. Now over here we have one that signifies write increment which would be increment the um, uh, memory location, decrement the memory location, read from the memory location, run Z which is basically used to zero out the memory step which this is not implemented at this time um, I'm having some problems coming up with a way to actually step through programs and then we also have a reset key here now this reset key is for a software reset it actually just uh, zeros out the memory and then jumps back to memory location uh, zero 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 now there's another um, latch up here that actually runs a uh, 10 segment uh, LED bar. This particular one here, only eight bits are being used. I'm thinking about using the far to left bits to actually, uh, for example, maybe memory versus IO access, but I'm gonna mess with that at a later time. The clock on this is currently six megahertz, meaning that it, you know, the clock cycles six million times a second. Um, that's pretty much it for the computer itself. Now, of course, like I said, there is going to be an I.O. board here, and um, I will get into that at a later time, but um, it, it's just not finished yet. I'm still working on some of the code for the uh, decoding with the 22V10. But I figured that I would do a short demonstration by actually loading a program, and that's what I have here. Now, this is a short program that I've written. It actually, um, will output to the LED bar here. And um, it's pretty simplistic. So I'm actually going to uh, do this on camera. That way you can see that it actually does in fact work. So when we boot up the computer and re reset it, it jumps to address 8000 and it shows the um, information at that location. Uh, currently it's showing zero. So if we actually increment that, zero, zero, zero. And the reason is, is because I actually have a RAM clear function that uh, clears the RAM and checks to make sure it's all operational. So we're just going to go ahead and get this going and enter this in. So the first is, or the first byte is 1E. E. Then we're going to increment. Zero, six. Then 16. And then zero, 00. Address 4 is going to be 4B. So there we go. And then ED. And then 5 1. Fourteen. Zero one zero zero four zero zero B seven nine. Two zero 
FB 18 and F2. Alright, now that we got the information plugged in, we're going to go ahead and jump to memory location 800. We can see our data is still there. Now, we're going to just cycle through this, and you'll have to kind of bear with me because I'm going to try to do this as I walk through this. So we've got 1E, 06, 16, 00, 4B, ED, 51, 14, 01, 00, 40, 0B, 79, B0, 20, FB, 18, F2. All right, so we know our data is correct. Now, uh, we're actually gonna jump back to memory location 8000. Now, the reason for this is one of the quirks that I uh, coded in this, and I did it on purpose, was that whenever you run a program, it runs it from the current um, memory location. So we wanna make sure that we're in the actual memory location that we're trying to begin our code from. So. Um, we've jumped back to the beginning of uh, RAM and we're just going to hit run and whenever you see run you will see uh, binary counting done on the seven segment display now it will be from right to left uh, rather uh, least significant bit to most significant bit being uh, right to left and um, it's not going to be too fast so you'll be able to actually see it count uh, it's actually relatively slow considering, but uh, this is the code that is running. So as you can see, it actually works. Um, it doesn't take too long for it to actually get to the top of memory there, and of course once it does, it will actually start back at zero, and we'll go ahead and let it do its thing. But it's actually a pretty interesting uh, little project. I've really enjoyed it, and of course I'm still working on it. I've still got to um, get the uh, uh, other buffers set up that way I can have some exterior boards to hook up to this but the idea behind this was is that I could um, you know learn how to interface different components to the uh, buses so um, by being able to actually use this to interface chips to a breadboard or to a little proto board that I've worked on I can then enter the code in manually uh, here just like what I've shown and then being able to actually uh, in real time see whether it worked and so I have to then try to uh, burn a ROM and then see if the code worked and not being able to tell. At this point, um, you know, it just kind of works. Now, uh, with the reset key, for example, if I press reset, it's not going to do anything, okay? But if I actually hit the reset up here, you can see it stops, it jumps back, it clears the memory. Now, let's say that I want to jump to a memory location. Uh, I know that's kind of bright, but let's just read from there. So this is F000. Now, if I were to hit the reset key now, and of course, you would be, you would have to actually program this into whatever program you were running. But if I hit it now, you can see it jumps back to eight, and it clears the memory again. So that's all I was going to show you guys today. Um, it's pretty interesting. I think that um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you ought to give it a go. Uh, relatively speaking, the board itself is very simple. Uh, most time-consuming part of it was actually doing all the point-to-point point wiring, um, you know, soldering rather. Uh, the software isn't too complex. The entire monitor only occupies about 150 bytes in uh, the ROM. So that's pretty small. Um, it's got a couple bytes that actually have, uh, well, basically, I'll just go ahead and show this to you. So if we go to the address 000, zero uh, we can see the first byte here is C3 so that's the jump command and it jumps to uh, you have to remember the uh, most significant most significant byte is actually the second one so zero zero one or zero one so zero one zero zero so if we actually jump to that location we can see we've got some more code here so uh, it jumps a good 255 bytes and then from here there's really not that much data you can see it scroll through i believe the top is somewhere around one nine so let's take a look at that okay 
right, so the top of RAM is 0192, and that's where, or, or the top of the uh, uh, ROM is actually 0191, and that's where you know, the data ends, and you just get a bunch of FFF. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm going to try to do a couple updates on this just to work. Um, I can kind of show the progress. Aside from that, um, yeah, hopefully the next thing that you'll see is the um, I.O. port here working and maybe a breadboard or something hooked up to it with some blinky lights just to show proof of concept. All right, thanks so much.